Hello my friends, this is Scott Moore and you're watching the SMC Journal Show. This is a new podcast that talks about everything that has to do with performance engineering, monitoring, testing, and anything else that we want to talk about around performance. Boy, do we have a lot of news, uh, but we today we're going to be talking about what's happening with the Google Chrome browser and some of the new features that will affect us as performance engineers and developers if you care about performance. But first, I think the biggest news that I want to share with you is my friend, uh, Mr. Leandro Melendez, has now decided to join K6. And if you are connected to him on social media, you probably saw this post. Uh, I saw this on LinkedIn, um, and this was just yesterday. So this show is airing January the 20th, 2022. Uh, so I just, this is brand new as of yesterday. So Leandro um, is now joining the K6 team and he released, there's some cinematic music that I'm, I'm muting out here, but love the visual effects and the cinematic music that comes with this um, when he made this announcement. So I think it's really cool. If you get a chance, follow Leandro on Twitter and on LinkedIn and you'll be able to see uh, this video. And as I, as I look through this, I think, you know, what a ham, what a freaking ham, you know. I would never make a big deal out of joining a new company and making, you know, changes like that. You know, I, I just, that's just not my style. I mean, I've got more, more class than that, but, uh, you know, that's just me. Just kidding, Leandro, we're very happy for you. Uh, congratulations. Can't wait to see what comes out of this with you being with K6. And also, uh, what we're going to see all year from you and the other members of the Perf Bytes team. Uh, and just excited about a lot of things that are happening in the performance world with all the uh, media. We're, and we're all kind of challenging each other to up our uh, up the bar on the video. And uh, boy, do I have some stuff coming out soon that you're, you're going to want to see. So what's our main topic today? Let's dive right into it. Um, now I'm running Chrome browser 97. Let's take a look at that real quick. Yeah, I'm on version 97 dot some large digit number out there um, version. I'm sure if you're running the standard and you're not running the Canary versions, then you're probably running that too. But here's what's coming in 98 that affects you as a performance tester, performance engineer or developer. Um, the biggest change is going to be, uh, let's look at the table of contents. Yes, Lighthouse 9. Uh, so there's some accessibility changes, but there's a big deal here. Uh, there's actually an article, a whole article on this, and any article or URL that I am talking about on the show will be shared in the notes portion of the YouTube video or, or on smcjournal.com. So every time I post a new show, you'll see all the notes of what I'm talking about on the show. So don't worry about that. But um, an article that came, this is actually kind of old. Now the announcement of what's happening in, in Chrome 98 was just a few days ago, uh, I think January the 13th. But Brendan Kenny actually wrote what's happening with Lighthouse 9 uh, here. And it's really cool. There are some breaking changes that are happening with that. So if you're already using Lighthouse, say in a, an automated fashion, Probably going to want to check to make sure that it's not going to break anything that you're doing. But the biggest news here is these Lighthouse user flows. It's a new API that's in Lighthouse that allows you to create basically scripts. Okay, and and when we say scripts, I think of like uh, load testing scripts, you know, from VUGen from Loadrunner or user paths from NeoLoad or or Eggplant Performance. Uh, so 
this is interesting because the way they do it is you end up with a, a puppeteer script. And so for those of you unfamiliar, puppeteer is another open source project from Google that uses node and the, the node JavaScript language to actually create is that's the code behind this. But there are recorders now that allows you to uh, record this automated script. So think functional automation as well, but I care about performance. What this gives you is the performance scores that Lighthouse uh, gives you in a report instead of like for a single page for the entire flow and each individual page at any stage. And you not only see their performance, but SEO, best practices, all of that. I think that's really cool. Um, you can have a little snapshot report or something overall. So uh, I think that is pretty awesome. This article also talks about changes to the actual report itself where they've made improvements to the, the way they reveal the information to show, make it clearer, I guess, in the reporting is, is the best way to put it, even in the summary section of where it's getting this information and how it's reporting. There's uh, some accessibility improvements as well. Uh, there's another article, again, by uh, Brendan, the same person, Brendan Kenny, more about him in just a moment, moment but uh, Brendan actually walks you through this new API and talks about how you can uh, get the code it talks about setting it up here, as you can see, how to navigate through with a browser, uh, get the flow. Here's an example of some node JavaScript that would run a user flow. He talks about warm cache and cold cache. Um, so let's mention that right now. So uh, those of you unfamiliar, when you have a web page that the first time that you come across it, it, it doesn't know anything and your browser has to pull in all the images and the style sheets, the client side JavaScript, and that takes a little extra time, but then it actually stores a local copy of that. We, we call that cache. So it's caching all of this so that if you were to say, uh, you know, 30 seconds later, I want to go back to that page. Well, it already has a lot of the static things that won't change and it will just go out and retrieve anything that might have changed uh, dynamically uh, over that time. And, so it makes the timing of the second, if you were timing that, the first time you get that, it would take a lot longer because you're pulling in these resources the first time. Second, third, fourth time, we're going to be a lot quicker. So think about from an automation standpoint, if I ran this in a loop uh, and I the first time I did that, I would get a timing of say, maybe let's five or six seconds uh, but then the second and third time is a half a second. And you start averaging all these times, you're thinking, well, everything's great. But the first time user experience may be a worst case and what you actually want to, to get in your reporting. So you have the ability in this scripting language to say whether I want it to clear all the cache and pretend like it's a, a new user each time. Uh, so let's talk about Brendan real quick. Uh, as I go to the Lighthouse GitHub repo, that's the name I see as a person who's sort of the gatekeeper over this project. So in my opinion, I think you should find out more about Brendan. Uh, and thank you, Brendan, for writing these uh, wonderful articles and keeping us updated on this. You can also follow him on Twitter and a lot of his Twitter posts talk about what's happening with Lighthouse uh, as he, this is his world. So he's talking about new versions and things that come up. Uh, so I think that's, that's worth checking out. So how do we take this to the next level as a performance engineer? So it, first of all, it's good to know that Lighthouse scoring um, is there in the browser in the first place. The reporting is getting better. Now we can create user flows and have Puppeteer scripts playing back uh, in an automated fashion. Puppeteer allows you to run these browser sessions from user does step A, B, C, D, and E you can watch that run if you want to, but you can also run this in a headless fashion in the background. So the browser doesn't actually come up, but it's still gathering timings and possibly uh, other types of metrics for you. And then you can scrape that into some other external uh, source or uh, database or create some kind of a graph in Grafana from that. But so you can run that as a command line interface as well. So Lighthouse has its own command line interface you can run. So then that tells me that I can run that in a continuous fashion through a CI pipeline as well. So let's just kind of take a look at this article that talks about automating Lighthouse for every commit that the developers do. I think this is a great idea and this is really 
where we want to get. So they're calling this Lighthouse CI. Love it. It's a suite of tools that allows you to continuously run for every build th this Lighthouse, these user flows, so you can get these scores. Perfect. And so if I am a performance engineer uh, on a team that's handling load testing, now I haven't mentioned load testing here. This isn't a load testing solution. This is just a performance test a performance metric. So we're answering the question here, does it work for one? Does it perform well for one? Does it perform well on my machine? Uh, so then developers would take that and put that into a pipeline. They may actually want to run a low level load test. Maybe they have a, uh, you know, maybe they can do 10 sessions of Lighthouse uh, concurrently um, and find out, you know, what are, maybe run it a few times in a loop uh, with cold cash and get these these metrics and look at those scores you may want to put some kind of a threshold there that says between builds if the score for my performance um, number goes down to a certain level raise a red flag doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to roll out the product or it's going to stop the build process but at least raise a flag look at the report and have the developer find out why was that why is that score changed who changed something that made the score go below this certain level. Maybe that's 70 or 75 or something like that. That's something for you to figure out as a as part of your business. But I think that that is a great thing to be doing. I think that allows me as a performance engineer to kind of educate my developers. I'm surprised at developers who don't know about the performance features in Chrome Dev Tools. Not just Lighthouse, but there's there's two or three things that you can run in dev tools that will give you performance information at a network level and bet these best practices when you have pages with too much stuff on them and the page is just too big or the resources are too big the footprints too big uh, all of these are things that the browser will guide you through now if you can automate that in a headless way in a ci pipeline and you can do that for every build why why wouldn't you do that now you're engineering performance into your product and now the performance engineers in your company can worry about finding additional things, performance defects that might happen only under certain load conditions at a certain level. Well, we never saw this until we reached the 500 concurrent user level or uh, when we caused auto scaling to kick off. Now, well, now we've got back end issues on the database. So we no longer have sort of these front end type issues where say we have heavy JavaScript or whatever. So uh, this is great, and I, I, this is one area where just Google has just been really killing it because they have this culture of performance. And so by building this, all of this stuff into a browser, it really just empowers a developer um, to have a constant eye on where the performance is if, if they're building web applications. So applaud Lighthouse 9, thank you very much. I might as well go ahead and give you that applause so you get you get the thumbs up today so what do you think um what do you think have you has anybody tried lighthouse nine yet are you looking at the scores uh, i'd like to hear your feedback about this uh, you can always reach me at scottmore.consulting and i've got a link there to my profile on linkedin which i'm active on there's also a twitter account handle which is load tester uh, you can also reach me at the email address that you see below now, which is help at Scott Moore Consulting. And I'd love to hear from you. Now I want to talk just a little bit about our sponsors. Uh, we, are spo we have a new sponsor to announce on the show today, which is Keysight Technologies, the makers of Eggplant Performance. And we appreciate your new sponsorship of this show. Um, and we're going to be discussing all types of tools on this show, but that would also include eggplant performance as well. So we appreciate that. This show is also sponsored by the makers of LoadRunner, MicroFocus, my friends there. And did you know that LoadRunner solutions have the largest community of practitioners? And I will have a link to the MicroFocus community. They are makers of LoadRunner uh, Enterprise, LoadRunner Cloud, and LoadRunner Professional. And finally, we're also sponsored by Haymaker Coffee Company. So if you go to the URL that you see there on your screen now, haymakercoffeeco.com, and put in my code of PERF10, you will get 10% off the coffee that you buy. I'd like to know what you think about the coffee. I'm drinking it right now, and I, and I enjoy it. 
Uh, so thank you guys at Haymaker. Uh, they're a new startup based out of North Florida and they are really doing a great job. They're working on uh, mobile trucks now, uh, multiple mobile trucks that will be out and we're gonna be doing some more interesting things with Haymaker, uh, working on a special blend of that coffee and I hope to announce that pretty soon as well. So thank you so much sponsors and thank you for watching the show. Thank you for subscribing to the YouTube channel. Um, always happy to hear from people and what would you like for me to talk about? I mean, there's so much going on in the realm of performance right now. There's so many ways I could go with this, but I could also have guests on the show. Uh, what type of topics would you like to see and who would you like to uh, have be seeing on the show and get some of their, uh, their input as well instead of just me yakking at you? I'd love to hear what you have to say. So until next time, this is Scott Moore for the SMC Journal Show where it's all about performance and we'll see you next time.